Good morning guys, Ryan Carruthers here from the BetfairTrainingCommunity.com with another one of these one-line lessons. So if you are new here, please do hit subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss any of this content. It's been great, we've got quite a few extra subscribers over the course of these videos. That's been pretty cool. Today's one-line lesson is a little bit later, but that's due to the fact that uh, YouTube just wouldn't connect and I ended up just sat staring at the phone like, you're going to let me on? You're going to let me on? And uh, yeah, but we're now on. So say hello. <coughs> Crypto, Carl. Good morning, Angus. Good morning. It is a great morning. It's flipping freezing now. Um, and I, yeah, I have, a, uh, I have a parcel arriving today, which I've already missed a couple of times. Don't ask how you can miss a parcel when you're on lockdown. You know, but you know, you guys know what the parcel man's like around here. Chuck just chucks the parcels around. So I've got to keep my eye out for him. Um, good morning, Jeff. Nice to uh, to see you. So today's online lesson is all about always having a reason to get involved. It's, it will be. Be back over the bloody fence. Always having a reason to get involved and also having a reason, always having a reason to get out. So this was user submitted anonymously. I think it's an incredible uh, thing that we need to think about, to be honest. Um, and that's what I really like about opening up these online lessons to you guys. I am not opposed to you guys giving the online lessons and me just sort of giving my thoughts on it. Uh, we'll have a bit of a chat about it and we'll see what happens. Because I think with always having a reason to get involved is and always thinking that it actually sort of narrows the focus a little bit because <coughs> if you don't have a reason to get involved, what's the point in getting involved? I know I get quite a few, I've had quite a few emails as well. You know, I did one of the videos was apparently quite controversial where somebody was chatting about how you shouldn't, uh, how re, uh, research isn't the be all and end all, how you don't even need to do it, how you can just open up the computer and trade on a game. I really don't agree with that. I don't, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But if you're not looking at information, gathering information, how do you make any decisions? How do you decide what trade is better? How do you narrow down that list? So I think always having a reason to get involved is an incredible and a reason to get out as well is incredible. So let's break those into two. So let's start with the reason to get involved. So you know when you you know when you go shopping and you've got a list to go shopping with, you usually get what's on that list and then you don't sort of impulse purchase many other things, do you? I don't know about you guys, but when I'm given a list, especially if the wife's giving me it, I will tend to stick to just what's on that list. I might chuck a few extra bits in, although I am quite disciplined. It's the wife... Uh, good morning, Peter. You can always tell when the wife's done the shopping because she's a lot more impulsive than I am. But you stick, to, you stick to that, don't you? You have a reason to get those items on that, that list because maybe you've planned your meals for the week or the next couple of days. So then counteract that when you don't have a list and you just go and you just willy-nilly buy stuff. Uh, I'm shopping at the minute. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so do you have a list or are you just impulse purchasing? Or are you just sort of trying to make it up in the shop? Because... You know, if you've got if you've got a list, you tend to you have a reason. You have a reason to buy the things. Maybe you're baking a cake or whatever it is, or you planned your meals for the week. You get majority of what's on that list. You don't impulse. You don't buy that much extra stuff. But if you don't have a list, you tend to just buy whatever. You know, I've done that recently, especially with the lockdown. I've been trying to buy more in one go, and I've been loading it onto the the checkout, thinking, "What the bloody hell have I bought?" Like, I've genuinely been thinking, what the bloody hell have I got? Why is all this? And then I get to the checkout, they ring it all up, and I look at it and go, it's expensive. And I load the cupboards, and I'm like, I've bought loads of rubbish. I've bought loads of stuff. Do we need even, do we even need half of this? Like, I've been buying, lo like, kilo of carrots, parsnips, squash, everything. Butternut squash, that is, by the way. Just buy loads of veg. Can't even eat it all. Crazy. But... I have eaten it all, it's not gone to waste. 
and it's the same with trading. You know, if <coughs> if you have a reason to do that trade, it's more likely to be a successful trade. And it doesn't, and I'm not talking about just having to make money on it. I'm talking about making you better at trading, about analysing the trades, about doing your research, everything that you need to do to be a better trader, handling your mindset. It's going to give you that bigger window, a better window of opportunity because you've got a reason to do that trade. Whereas if you're just picking a trade willy-nilly, just like you're chucking the wrong cereal into your shopping cart, you're not giving yourself the best opportunity for success. The cat's with me. She's off. Bless her. So you've got to give yourself a reason to do those trades. You've got to have a reason to get involved in those trades because otherwise, what is the point? You are just opening up yourself for to just buy all those offers basically in the supermarket you don't really want. You've got to, so you've got to have a reason to get involved in your trade. That's the first part of it. And how you find that reason, for me, is the what has to happen question. So break it down. What has to happen? What are you trying to achieve here? And then having the reason to get out of the trade as well. Now, that is really crucial. Having a reason to get out of the trade is broken down into two parts. So one as a stop loss or two as a profit. So you've hit your goal. So thinking about that before you get involved is crucial, guys. It's so crucial to go, okay, so this is my reasoning to get out because if it hits that stop loss, I will lose 20% of my stake or 15% of my stake, whatever you have decided you're going to use. So that's my reason to get out. If I don't follow that reason, then I'm just going on hope value and I'm just dragging this trade out. That There's no reason for me to stay in this trade. I don't have a potential to profit anymore because that has gone. I'm at my stop loss. Now I'm gambling and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The gap is just getting bigger. That void is just getting bigger. And that is your, that's your stake. Your profit is gone. Now you just stop loss. It's just getting bigger. It's about damage limitation at that point. Getting out of my trade is in my trading plan, profit and loss side of it. Yeah, it needs to be. Because you've got to know, don't just focus, a lot of people just focus on the profit. You know, if it hits that, I'll get out. And then if it hits this, I won't. You, you, you've got to know what you're getting in at, what you're getting out at, whether that is profit or loss. And having a reason for that. So if it hits x y and z they're the parameters for the stop loss then i will trade out because i know that i cannot and will not resurrect that trade anymore my stop loss has been hit i will get out you know you know northern rock the bank northern rock when they were absolutely tanking like just tanking would anybody anybody would they have carried on investing in northern rock or would they have pulled the plug on them you know, you just wouldn't do it. I have a 50% loss, but don't really know what a reasonable profit is on average for £5. So one thing I want you to, to, to sort of move to the side is thinking about this reasonable profit. I don't want you to think about what is my profit on a £5 stake. I want you to think about the window of opportunity inside of that trade. So if you're trading a certain strategy, hello, Dolo, if you're trading a certain way, so if you're doing a lay the draw trade, for example, okay, and you know that if you lay at, uh, I'm just going to use random numbers now, 2.7, and then when the goal is scored, that trade goes out to sort of five. That's where you know the, the window of opportunity is. That's where you enter the trade. That's where you can usually exit the trade. What I want you to try and build up is an average of the exit. So you know how much usually that market moves in your favour so that you can then get out. And this does link into having the reason to get out of the trade for the profit. 
and I'm glad that you brought this up because this is really pivotal and it links into this lesson. So when you're testing these strategies out, if you know your strike rate and you know how much on average that market moves, so track the price that you're going to get in at and then the price that you can get out at for a profit. So if something happens that enables you to do the exit profit part of the trade, so on a lay the draw, it's a goal, then where does the price go to? So you know that usually you get in here and you get out here on average and then track them. Because then what you can do when you've got your data is you, you know your strike rate, you know how you need to be profitable and you know the average jump. So you can go, okay, on my stakes, I usually will make 40%. So 40%, fantastic. So 40% return on my stake, brilliant. This is what time the goal comes on average. And then you can compare that to what happens as a loss. So at this time, this is what my loss looks like at this time. This is what my loss will look like at this time. This is what my loss will look like. This is what my loss will look like. So I've laid the draw for years. I sometimes get involved in... Yes. What about that, Phil? Just what I went through was most helpful for you. Um, just why I sort of chat about the lay in the draw. So my reasoning for getting out of lay the draw and getting in... In is I've checked all the stats. I know that the team that I've picked, I think is going to score first. I know the away team is going to concede first. The odds are in the right range. The stats all line up. Blah, 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 blah. I get in and I'm assessing the trade. Now, I will, I will wait until about 70 minutes to get out on those, those games. And the reason I wait till 70 minutes on my lay the draw, my proper lay the draw, so I'm not talking half time or anything now, is that... I give myself 70 minutes. I know my strike rate is high enough that if it gets to 70 minutes, I am going to lose a chunk. The window of shifting odds and keep note. Fantastic. That's good. So I know I am going to lose a chunk, a fair, fair chunk of my stake. But I know that my strike rate on the way that I lay the draw, the games that I pick, is high. So I know that that window of, of opportunity for me on those games is huge. And I also know that my profit and my percentage of profit linked with my strike rate outweighs my losses. And I monitor that. If that starts to change, then I change what I'm doing. So it's really key to have these reasons. And the reason you're getting out and you're not letting those trades run for 50-60% is because you know that you don't have enough strike rate and the window of opportunity with those odds shifting to get that back in enough time. And not just enough time, but the risk reward is way too high. So you need to tweak it. You need to work on something else. And that really is it, guys. So giving yourself those reasons to get in and out, especially the out, thinking about tracking those odds, thinking about what price it usually moves to, how many ticks do you usually get, and then giving yourself the freedom and flexibility to work within that and go, right, boom, I'm getting out, I'm moving on. Or if it drops down to the stop loss point, okay, I know that I've lost 20% of my stake. If I carry on much longer, I'm going to lose 30, 40% of my stake. And I know that my window of opportunity to get that back, I would need 10, 15, 20 trades and I don't have the strike rate to be able to do that, so I am going to risk way too much, so I'm going to get out now. Um, need a bigger diary. <laughs> um, <coughs> well, you could just... You can, you can just find what works for you, so pick one thing that you want to work on and then go from that, you know? Don't overcomplicate it. Keep it as simple as you can. And... Um, and go from there. And that really is it, guys. So hopefully that was a good lesson. Um, just in the comments below, let me know what was most useful for you in this lesson. And um, yeah, I'll just summarise that, guys. So, you know, if you, you've always got to have a reason to firstly get into your trade, and that is coming from narrowing down, using your research, working through, you know, what has to happen, um, I put my 
in my figures in Never Fought the Exit figures, fantastic. And then when you're in the trade, the reason why you get out, so you get out if you're at a stop loss because you know your strike rate cannot handle that. You know that the risk reward is gone. So you've hit the stop loss, everything's got to go because you cannot you cannot resurrect this trade. Stop loss has been hit. You agree to get out of that stop loss because of the data in which you previously tracked. So you get out. And if it hits the profit, you get out because you know that that is the gap. Can anyone hear this crazy cat? Psycho. So this is where you're getting out because you've tracked this. This is where it moves from the entry point to the exit point. On average, that's where it goes. You know that you've got that. You get the strike rate right, and then boom, there you go. Uh, great video. Thanks for another box tick for me. Thanks. Yes, again, Phil. If you do have any um, any one line lessons that you would like me to cover, or anything that you do struggle with, sort of what are the challenges for you? Just send them through to me. Um, if you want to do them and you don't want uh, them to be if you want to do it anonymously, just send me an email and I won't add your name on. Should we record? Should we record the time that we exit with relevance to the odd shift? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what I like to do as well to track. So you can then plot on a graph basically what is happening to the prices throughout the game. So whether it's going down, it's going up. And that will teach you and you will find angles all, all over the place because of that. Um, one of the things that I would really, 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 really love to create is um, is a sheet that gave you, broke down the sort of times and the prices on on markets on average that would sort of help do this. Um, probably be in the offing for, for after we've done a few of the other bits of software for BTC. But um, yeah, that's the lesson for today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another one-line lesson. Like I say, if anyone does have a one-line lesson that they'd like me to cover, please do email info at betfairtradingcommunity.com and do check out betfairtradingcommunity.com. Ryan, how long have you been trading for? I'm considering joining BTC. Oh, mate, I've been trading for like 10 years now. Feed the cat. I know. Can you hear her? Can anyone actually hear that cat? So yeah, it's been about 10 years now trading and I've done loads of uh, loads of different ways of trading and loads of different sort of strategies. Why don't you? It concerns me to delete negative comments and block people. Why is that? To be honest, mate, I haven't got a clue why some of these negative comments get deleted. Um... I don't delete them and if uh, and I'm an open book and I'm straight John Bull to the point. So if you've got a comment or you want me to, to talk about something, just ask. Um, you know, that's, uh, that is what it is. I, uh, I don't personally delete any comment, even when people kick off back my hair colouring. Don't really matter to me. Uh, so I don't know how some of these comments do get deleted. Uh, we've had quite a few bits. Why don't you look at them and respond then on BTC? Where are they? Where are the negative comments? If you tell me, I'll respond to them right now. On this channel. Where? I don't see, okay, 20, November 2018, there was a video. What was the, what was the comment? That's like nearly two years ago now. Where was the comment? Profitable football strategy. Okay, what's the comment? Thank you for enjoying all of our videos as well. That's fantastic. <coughs> Did anyone watch the, well, they can't be seen anymore. Jesus, well, 2018. No idea what the comment is. 
I know I didn't delete them. So if someone from BTC did, then I can't, I have no idea about how that happened, what happened there. But if there's a negative comment, if you can remember the comment, throw it up and I'll, I'll chat about it. Did anyone watch Martin's video that he put up that I recommended yesterday about the one we need to talk where he had a shirt on? He put a shirt on because I always wear a hoodie. Bless him. He's trying to uh, he's trying to impress you lot, I think. 29th of November, 2018. Peter, I cannot answer a comment that I have absolutely no idea what it said it was so long ago that I won't remember. If you don't know the comment, I have no idea how I'm supposed to answer it. Someone said you didn't factor in, here we go, price when you determined if something was a good bet. Someone said you didn't factor in price when you determined if something was a good bet. Price has, price has always been factored in. Always. I've tracked every price I've taken on something. So if I've put something out there and said, this works, this has worked for me, I've already tracked the price that I've got in at and I've tracked the price that I've got out at. But I don't need to go deep into price and go, oh, this is why I take this price and this price and this price and this price. If it works and I've shared that, then, uh, then there we go. I've already tracked the price. Price is vital. Price is 100% vital. And if anybody has watched any of my videos, they will know how I bang on about price. I bang on about the window of opportunity. I bang on about getting in here and out here. You can't say four out of five have won recently, therefore it's a bet without taking into account price. Do you know why? Do you know why price has already been factored in? Because it already works. That video was nearly two years ago. It was two years ago, that video. Price has already been factored in. That strategy works. It makes me money time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. Price has already been factored in. Do you know why? Because the game is nil-nil at the point that it enters your first entry point. So the price has already come up to give it a great point of entry. I'm answering it now for you. The, the time has already gone up like that. The game is going like that, so the price is increasing. So you're, you're getting value on your side. You've got a high percentage chance of it happening anyway. So if you convert a percentage to a proper odds, that's there, you're getting in there. The window of opportunity is that section there. Boom, you take it. There's always this like thing with the trading world where there's just some people that they just, you give them something that will work and they always want to try and find a reason that it won't work. Do you know what? I've been using that strategy. I've been using that strategy since 2018 and I've made money every single week, month, boom, done. And that's all I'm going to say on it, to be honest, because I'm not going to overcomplicate it. It makes money, still makes money. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't, don't. I genuinely do wish you all the best with your trading and I hope that you are a profitable trader and um, that's it. And uh, yeah, probably going to leave you there, Peter. I hope you have a fantastic day, whatever you are doing. Um, I didn't even know that those comments got deleted. If I, if I could make those comments reappear, I'll have a look and I will make them reappear. I've used that strategy and had no problem. Yes. I know, Liam, it just works, doesn't it? 
just keep, it just works. It's like there is this thing with traders that you need to be set on fire while being chased by a tiger, jumping through flaming hoops or, you know, and have a spiders on your tarantulas. It's just, just ridiculous. You don't need to overcomplicate trading. Keep it simple and that's it. It's like one of the the best traders in my community, Keith, half time lay the draw, boom, makes loads of money on it. Just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. That is it. Okay, Peter, I'm going to leave you. I hope you have a fantastic day. And um, yeah, thank you for watching my video. I will be back on tomorrow, same place, at the same time. And uh, yeah, it'll be a cracker. Uh, not quite sure what it's on yet. And um, Peter, how am I doing it now? I've answered your question. Boom. Yeah. Um, so I'll see you guys all tomorrow. I'm going to go see what this mental cat has done and how much damage she's caused to the house because it sounds like she's ri ridiculously... Uh... Peter... This is the last thing I'm going to say to you. How have I walked away from a conversation when you mentioned a comment at 20 minutes and I've still been on the video for another six, nearly seven minutes? There you go. How is that walking away from a conversation? And if you think this channel is very poor, you do not have to watch my videos. You do not have to interact with my videos. In fact, I don't want you to. I only want the people who want to kick on with trading. So I wish you the very best in all your trading. Hope you have a fantastic time and um, enjoy yourself. I will be back tomorrow, guys. And uh, yeah, have a great day. <clears throat> and we'll see you all very, very soon. Cheers, guys.